and welcome to Overdrive. I'm Shireen Bhan. This week we're going to take a break from testing our regular cars and transport ourselves back in time. The automotive world has a history of inimitable classics, exclusive cars, iconic vehicles that are time immemorial. This week we get our hands on one such beauty. It's from the Jaguar stable. Rohit is the very, very lucky man who gets to drive this inimitable classic in its own backyard in East Sussex. Take a look. Now generally at the start of every video, we introduce you to a car and through the course of the video, we end up reviewing it. Today, however, I'm not going to do that because what I'm going to get into is more of a time machine than a car. It's called the Jaguar E-Type. Here's a disclaimer. This video or any picture that you've seen of the E-Type doesn't do justice to its beauty. You have to see the E-Type in flesh. And when you do, you realize that every superlative you've heard about the E-Type is true. Its shape is as complex as a silkworm's cocoon and its simplistically aerodynamic body was designed with a few mathematical calculations and had no connection whatsoever with the wind tunnel. Those high-rise shotgun exhausts, the wooden metal steering wheel, the toggle switches and those oval headlamps with screens bolted onto them bring the E-Type's race car pedigree to life. The seat wasn't adjustable for recline though and the not-so-roomy cockpit meant that you couldn't stretch yourself the way you liked. You had to realign yourself to find the right driving position and when you did, driving bliss was just a push of a button away. It feels so wonderful to drive the E-Type. This is the first time I'm driving this car and I'm absolutely elated to do it because I've never really driven all these old convertibles. I'm sure they, they must have been really fun to drive back in the day but even today it feels so much more special. It's not, not just the wind in your hair experience. You can smell the fuel. It feels very old school. The way the engine responds, the way the gearbox responds. It just feels so special. It just takes you back in time. And it's not just the exteriors that are beautiful, even the interiors, they're so very nicely laid out. It, simplicity is one aspect of it, but the way it's all laid out, all these toggle switches, it just feels so wonderful. But it's not just the exteriors and the interiors, there's one more aspect to it. From my point of view, from where I am driving, it feels so wonderful. You have that long nose, you have this hump in between, you can also see all those scoops on the bonnet. It just makes you feel so special when you're driving this car. You don't get that sort of an experience with the new generation of roadsters when you're sitting so low, so down, uh, closer to the ground. Here it, it's, it's just a different feeling. And apart from the sight and the smell, it's also the sound. This one runs a 4.2 litre 6 cylinder motor. It's just a very smooth sounding engine. I just can't imagine what the V12 would be like. I was elated when I drove the F-Type, the V8S, and that was one of the best sounding cars that I have ever driven. And like I said, I just can't imagine what the E-Type V12 would be like. This one here sounds very smooth and it's perfect for a road like this, a road that is quite silent here in the UK. It's just a very smooth melody. The Jaguar E-Type is so wonderful that it actually makes me wish that I was born in the 1960s and having driven this right now and spent some time with it, I just have fallen in love with that old world charm but that also makes me wish that this car was instead born in the 21st century with all the 21st century mechanicals. But you know what, my wish may just have been granted. This is the Eagle E-Type. E-Type suffix tells you that it is based on the icon from Jaguar. The Eagle prefix comes from an East Sussex based outfit that is known for the enviable showroom full of restored E-Types. But apart from procuring old E-Types, restoring them to their pristine condition and preparing them for sale to collectors, Eagle also builds some specials like the Speedster that you see here. 
The Speedster started as a bespoke project and its design was conceptualized by Paul Brace, Eagle's technical director. The Speedster's design takes the E-Type simplicity to a whole new level. There are no bumpers, the registration plate hub is narrower and the body flows into the cabin to create a harmonious design. The cocoon is made from aluminium and so is the dashboard fascia. The seats are more comfortable and the floor pan is lowered but you won't complain because the windshield is shorter, raked further back and arced so you don't really compromise in that wind in your hair experience. This car is wonderful even for the 21st century and it's not just about the time. It can also fit in any place in the world. If it stands outside the Buckingham Palace, it will make all the Britons go wild with pride. If it drives around the gateway of India, all Indians will feel that the English still had good trade relations with us and they still traded cars with us. If it goes and stands outside the Burj Al Khalifa, I'm sure it will make the wealthiest of Arabs go weak in their knees. This is a timeless beauty really. Then is the engine, a 4.7 litre straight 6 derived from the E-Types 4.2. It is mated to Eagle's 5-speed manual transmission which seems to keep the 460 Nm of torque ready for you to bite into as and when you want. With 314 PS of power being fed to a car that hardly weighs over a thousand kilos, the Speedster manages to sprint from 0 to 100 km an hour in under 5 seconds and can also achieve a top whack of more than 250 km an hour. What's better, you can still smell the engine fluids like you did in the E-Type. Now this is the interesting bit, you won't believe this. But while we were filming this video, I got an email that said that Jaguar is bringing back the E-Type. And I'm not kidding you. Back in the 1963, they had created 12 lightweight E-Types. But the original plan was to pre create 18 of them. So the final 6 which were not made are now going to be put into production. Now I don't know if this is pure coincidence. Or would the E-Type, the Eagle E-Type, have something to do with this? Because the way Eagle has put all the modern elements together with the old world charm and all the old world design, I think that must have got Jaguar thinking, why not we also do the same? Just a little while back in our 300th episode, we celebrated the whole idea of an open top convertible with three really fine convertibles. We had the Z4 and the Boxster and of course the Jaguar F-Type. And we really enjoyed filming that, we really enjoyed the whole drive, the way we celebrated it. But if you ask me, I think this is a true celebration of the open top convertible. It looks as beautiful as the original convertibles like the E-Type and then it has all that you need to make this car reliable even in the 21st century. I don't think it gets any better than this. Now right at the beginning of this video, I said that this car was more of a time machine than a vehicle really. And I said that because this vehicle takes you back in time to an era where cars were designed by artists and not scientists, where beauty and aesthetics were more important than things like fuel economy and emission norms. In fact, this car is so beautiful that even nature wouldn't give a dime about how much CO2 is coming out of those exhaust pipes. And thanks to Eagle, you can experience this timeless beauty even today. I'm not sure if I'll have the fortune of owning one of these, but the pride of having spent time with this and having driven the E-Type, I think that is going to remain with me for a long, long time. The bespoke Eagle Speedster is a rare gem. It costs even more than the Lamborghini, but what a beauty.